Hello! We are glad to see you on the Top Football channel. Today we'll have a look at five cases where footballers ruined their careers with one bad performance. And no, not only Loris Karius will be here. So sit back and relax, as we are about to start. Before enjoying our new video, subscribe to our channel and like the video. We will be very grateful for that. Now let's get going. Former Manchester United midfielder Cleverson will open today's edition. Before moving to Old Trafford, the footballer played at his homeland for Atletico, Paranaense, and gradually became a legend for that club. As part of the Brazilian team, Cleberson twice became the champion of the state of Parana and then the champion of the country in 2001. These achievements brought the player an offer to perform in the Brazilian national team and a trip to the 2002 World Cup. At the World Cup, Cleberson made five appearances, gave two assists and won gold medals with his national team. It seemed like his career just couldn't have been better. In 2003, the midfielder decided to keep going with his success in Europe and moved to Manchester United for £6.5 million. By the way, he did it all at the same time as Cristiano Ronaldo. But if the Portuguese was bought for the future, then from Cleberson, on the contrary, they expected quick results. Since he had to replace Roy Keane as a defensive midfielder and form a strong formation with Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs and many others. And what terrible failure awaited the Brazilian. Already in the second match for United against Southampton, Cleberson was seriously injured and left the pitch for a long time. As a result, he not only took part in only 30 matches in two years in England and was sold to Besiktas for £2 million, but he also failed to demonstrate his real level in Turkey. So the Brazilian returned to his homeland and later ended his career at 36 playing in the clubs of the minor football league in the United States. Unfortunately, one match and one injury cancelled Cleberson's entire success. We're really sorry for this guy. The legend of Real Madrid and Spanish football Iker Casillas was unlikely to be on this list. But even in his career, there came a moment when a couple of mistakes led to the fact that his beloved club turned away from him. The multiple champion of Spain, winner of Champions League, champion of Europe and the world, all these achievements of Iker cannot be denied or underestimated. But the 2014 World Cup in Brazil turned out to be an absolute misfire for him. Before the start of the tournament, many expected Spain to confirm its victorious status after the world triumph in 2010. But everything turned out completely different. So in the first round of the 2014 World Cup, Fury Roja met with the Netherlands and played 1-1 in the first half. However, after the break, the Spanish players, including Casillas, were simply unrecognizable. The Dutch scored four goals in the second half, and Iker was responsible for two of them. After the final whistle, the goalkeeper apologized for the missed goals and stated that it was the worst game of his career. Of course, he was forgiven for these mistakes. But in the next match, Spain lost again and lost the chances of reaching the playoffs. It happened in a duel with Chile, when Casillas again made a serious mistake and simply gave the opponent the crucial second goal. The final score was 2-0 in favor of the Chileans. After such failure, Iker remained on the bench in the third round. The head coach of Spain, Vicente del Bosque, decided that Pepe Reina would sort things out better. But the game with Australia no longer had any significance in the tournament. After the World Cup, Casillas finally lost his place in the main roster, losing the competition to the young and progressive David De Gea. In 2016, after the Spanish failed at the Euros, the great goalkeeper decided to end his career in the national team. Apart from that matter, the World Cup in Brazil opened a new transfer target for Real Madrid. That man was Costa Rican goalkeeper Keylor Navas, who came to Madrid and took Casillas' place in the starting lineup. In the end, Iker's game began to decline. They began to give less and less minutes of play and ousted him from the squad. After 25 years in Madrid, the legend had to leave the Santiago Bernabeu with tears in his eyes and sign a contract with Porto. 
You yourself perfectly remember this drama. Friends, we would certainly be wrong to say that Casillas' career was ruined by one World Cup, but it can't be disproved that those matches with the Netherlands and Chile subsequently led to heartbreaking finals for the player's career in Spain and Real Madrid. Do you agree with our opinion? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember Inter defender Douglas Maicon, one of the best wingers of the past decade? He has always been recognised not only by amazing reliability in defence, but also by the most effective actions in attack. And Jose Mourinho will probably never get a player of the same calibre on the right flank again, no matter what team the Portuguese coaches. Maicon impressed the Portuguese with his hard work and game-reading skills, and in the 2009-10 season, the Brazilian reached a high point in his career, winning Serie A, the Italian Cup and the Champions League with the Nerazzurri in one season, becoming the best defender of the main European club tournament, according to UEFA. At the same time, the list of individual player awards wasn't limited to one achievement. In 2010, he was also accepted as the best defender in the world and included in the symbolic team of the best players in the world, according to FIFA. Fantastic, isn't it? Success only pursued Maicon until exactly October 20th, 2010. This date is significant, since it was on that day that the defender first met on the pitch with a 21-year-old Welsh guy from Tottenham. His name was Gareth Bale. In the Champions League match, the up-and-coming youngster unexpectedly gave Maicon a real nightmare on the right flank. For almost the entire match, Bale simply made fun of one of the best fullbacks in the world and ran away from him as if from a little boy. The Brazilian found himself dumbstruck and could do nothing about it, while the cheeky Welshman scored a hat-trick. Although the Italians beat Spurs in Milan by 4-3, the second leg in London put everything in its place. Bale outplayed Maicon again provided two assists and helped Tottenham to win 3-1 in front of a crowded White Hart Lane. After those two appearances, Maicon could no longer be perceived as an ideal right-back. Raphael van der Vaart and Peter Crouch claimed that Bale killed his opponent, and the Italian press was shocked by the helplessness of the Inter player in the confrontation with the much younger winger of Tottenham. The story with Bale, the loss of the star's reputation, the departure of Jose Mourinho and the increasing frequency of injuries broke Maicon. After the appointment of Rafael Benitez, the Brazilian lost his former shape and soon moved to Manchester City, where he was also unable to redeem himself because of the incredible talent of the right-back Pablo Zabaleta. In one season, Maicon started for the citizens in only nine matches. Later, he was no longer needed by the new coach of the team, Manuel Pellegrini, and went to Roma, and then home to Brazil. Oh, and for you to know, recently, Douglas moved to a club in Italian Serie D, Sona Calcio, despite the fact that he could calmly end his career in his native country. For this, Maicon can only be praised, but whatever you say, after the humiliation of Bale, he lost everything he had worked on for so long. Now we will show you what a truly disastrous football debut looks like. Second place on the list goes to Jonathan Woodgate, England's most talented and promising defender in the early 2000s. While working with this guy at Newcastle from 1999 to 2004, the great Sir Bobby Robson considered Woodgate to be the best centre-back in Premier League history after Sol Campbell, Rio Ferdinand and Gareth Southgate. We aren't lying when we say that Jonathan's abilities were obvious to all British footballers, coaches and journalists, but he was always hampered by two things – the lack of significant trophies and endless injuries. For example, a month and a half before Euro 2004, the Newcastle defenders suffered a severe hip injury in a match against Chelsea and eventually didn't make it to the European Championships with the English team. Nevertheless, 
even these factors didn't bother the president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, who had been following Woodgate for a long time and wanted to poach him for the Galacticos. Apparently, Perez dreamed so much about Jonathan's transfer that Real Madrid doctors specially carried out a medical examination, not paying attention to the footballer's injury. They didn't want to upset Florentino with information about the Englishman's chronic injuries. So in August 2004, Woodgate left Newcastle and became a Real Madrid player for 18 million euros, which came as a surprise to the entire football world, including the very newcomer to the Merengues. But then came something that Perez should have foreseen. Due to injury, Woodgate completely missed his first season at Real Madrid and made his debut for the club on September 22, 2005, in the La Liga match against Athletic Bilbao. In the middle of the first half, Jonathan scored an own goal and then received two yellow cards and left the team a man short. All this happened in his debut game. This is probably the worst feeling. My mum sat in the stadium and sobbed, recalled Woodgate. Despite the fact that Real saved the situation and won with a score of 3-1, the media discussed only Jonathan's shocking performance and further criticism along with new injuries broke the Englishman's spirit. Without even participating in 10 matches for the club, Woodgate was sold to Middlesbrough in April 2007. His resume was finally ruined by the title of worst 21st century signing in La Liga, according to Marca. The only good thing that happened to the defender after leaving Real was the transfer to Tottenham and his only trophy in the 2007-2008 League Cup. But then Woodgate's career continued to decline. As a result, all of his enormous potential was destroyed by constant traumas, operations and a disastrous debut at Real Madrid, which led to many other drawbacks. As a footballer, Jonathan hasn't been able to fully realise himself, but we wish him the best in coaching, which he started last season choosing Middlesbrough. Yes, a year later Woodgate lost his job, but we are sure that new challenges won't be long in coming. First place, no doubts, Liverpool goalkeeper Loris Carias. Liverpool goalkeeper Loris Carias is the anti-hero of the 2017-18 Champions League final. On the night of May 26, 2018, Liverpool met with Real Madrid and the Reds weren't considered the favourites for the match. But the squad showed some great football and were in no way inferior to Madrid. Up until the 51st minute, the scoreboard stayed at 0-0 and everything went according to the plan of the Merseysiders. Until Loris Carrius made a terrible mistake when he gave the ball to Karim Benzema right on the spot. Well, we all remember this episode very well, but none of us understand what the German was thinking in that situation. By the way, this is perhaps the worst thing that can happen to gamers in FIFA 21. Even after Loris's fail, Jurgen Klopp's side tied the score with a goal from Sadio Mane. But Gareth Bale's splendid second goal and Karius' second terrible mistake put an end to Liverpool's hopes in the Kiev final. The goalkeeper's tears could no longer help. It is noteworthy that after the game with Real, American doctors diagnosed the goalkeeper with a concussion after a clash with Sergio Ramos. And most likely this problem was the main reason for Karius' flop. Be that as it may, we remember that for the German the consequences of this match were ruthless. He disgraced himself in front of the whole world, and fans of the Reds rebelled on social networks, threatening the football player with reprisals and murder of his loved ones. Unable to cope with the crazy amount of pressure, Karius left Anfield and continued his career in Besiktas. For two years in Turkey, the goalkeeper started in 67 matches, but kept only 14 clean sheets. For now, Larice is on loan at Union Berlin, and frankly, he is unlikely to be able to revive his career, 
because he will always be remembered as the main loser of the Champions League final. It's unfortunate, but this is the reality. From a humane point of view, one can only sympathise with Karius since he didn't deserve the waves of insults and threats from the fans. But the football world has always been, and always will be, merciless. Well, this is the point where the episode ends. Which player from today's top do you feel the most sorry for? Friends, we are pleased to announce that the channel has 20,000 subscribers. So subscribe to Top Football now and join our football family. We sincerely thank you for watching and for your continued support. We'll be back with new releases very soon. Bye-bye.